Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Cover Letters. My name is Kelsey Keefe, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm a career consultant at the UConn Center for Career Development. Now I'm gonna turn it over to my colleague, Amalinda Rosito, to introduce herself and go over some webinar logistics and share some content on cover letters. Then at the end, I will take the mic and answer some of your questions. Hi everyone, my name is Amalinda Rosito, pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm the Associate Director for Programming and Internal Relations with the UConn Center for Career Development. Today I will be presenting on cover letters. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's webinar. You should see your attendee interface on your computer desktop in the upper right corner. You're listening in using your computer speaker system by default. If you would prefer to join in over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. You will have the opportunity to submit text questions by typing your questions into the questions pane of the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during this presentation. These will be addressed during the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. Note that today's presentation is being recorded and will be emailed to all webinar registrants within 24 hours. A cover letter is a one-page formal business letter that you include with your resume in an application for jobs, internships, co-ops, and other positions. It can be submitted through an online application system or sent via postmail or email. Since it is a written document, it is a sample of your written communication skills. The cover letter introduces you and your resume to the reader. Think of your resume as a list or a summary of your past experiences. The cover letter is a document that allows you to pick roughly two experiences and three skills from your resume, talk about them more in depth, and explain to the reader how these skills and past experiences will help you do the job you're applying to. A well-written and tailored cover letter shows your enthusiasm for the position and organization and is key to convincing the employer to invite you for an interview. Your cover letter will include four main parts. Typically, it's broken up by contact information and salutation, your introduction paragraph, then you'll include body paragraphs, which can range anywhere from two to three, and a closing paragraph and signature. The heading is where you provide your contact information. Simply copy and paste the header from your resume to create what is called letterhead. Below that, you'll include the date you're writing the letter, and below that is the address block for the employer. The first two lines include the name of the person you are addressing the letter to and the person's title. The next three lines include the organization's name and the address. Always try your best to find a specific person to address the cover letter to. If you can't find a specific person, omit the first two lines of the address block and just start with the organization's name. In this example, if I didn't have a specific person to address the letter to, I would skip Kim Miller and Human Resources Manager and just start with Design My Home. You'll then want to greet the person you are writing the letter to by writing Dear followed by their first and last name and a colon. When possible, direct your cover letter to a specific person. If you can't find a contact name, use Dear Hiring Manager or Dear Search Committee. If you're applying to positions in higher education, in most cases you'll be writing Dear Search Committee. The introduction paragraph describes why you are writing. In this first sentence, begin by highlighting something that makes you a unique applicant. This could be your educational background or your past experience. In this example, Jonathan Husky begins by highlighting his past internship and editing experience. Beginning this way is more interesting than starting with, hello, my name is. Also, specifically mention the position and company you are applying to. Next, make a connection with the reader by explaining why you are interested in working with the organization. In this example, Jonathan Husky mentions a common professional acquaintance that he met at an information session. End the paragraph with a statement similar to a thesis statement by listing three skills you possess and are particularly relevant to the position. These skills should be directly emphasized in the position's description. You are going to explain how you've used those skills in the next two paragraphs. Next are the body paragraphs. They show that you can do the job by providing specific examples of past work, internship, volunteer, leadership, or classroom experiences to illustrate that you have the skills from the position description. A good way to do this is to pick two experiences from your resume and talk about each in a body paragraph. In one of these body paragraphs, focus on two skills from the introduction. In the other body paragraph, focus on the third skill from your introduction. Your body paragraphs will likely incorporate other skills you have, but you want to focus on three skills you highlighted in your introduction section. 
In this example, Jonathan has chosen to talk about two experiences on his resume, his copywriting internship and editing experience at the campus newspaper. Remember that he should be talking about his editing, communicating, and teamwork skills in these paragraphs. Begin the body paragraph by giving a brief description of the experience. In this example, Jonathan is talking about his copywriting internship. Describe what you did at this experience. This description should clearly illustrate that you have one to two of the skills you are focusing on from the introduction. Do not simply list the tasks or skills. Remember that the reader will have this information from your resume. In this example, Jonathan describes the project he worked on at his internship. With his description, you can clearly see that he utilized a lot of communication and teamwork skills. We can also see that he used Adobe Photoshop. The example demonstrates that he has this skill, but it isn't the focus like with the communication and teamwork skills. End the paragraph by explaining how the experience you just described will relate to the position you are applying to. A great way to do this is like the example, where Jonathan says he looks forward to applying his communication and teamwork skills, and he mentions the position, title, and organization. Repeat this general format with the next paragraph. Begin by introducing the experience you are going to talk about, the newspaper editor experience in this example. Describe the experience. Make sure the emphasis is on your skills that you use and focusing on one or two of them from your introduction. Here we can see all of the editing skills Jonathan used. Again, end the paragraph by relating the experience to the position you're applying to. In this case, Jonathan emphasizes the origin organization similarity. Remember to be specific and descriptive in these paragraphs. Don't just write general statements regarding your desired work for the organization. An employer will know if you're being authentic. The closing paragraph is where you thank the employer for looking over your application materials and reiterate your interest in the position and organization. Also, be sure to express your willingness to follow up for more information if needed. And lastly, sign your cover letter with sincerely and type your name. You may choose to scan in your own signature to close the document. And now for some do's and don'ts to help you as you write. Do be sure to research the position and company prior to beginning the cover letter so that you can show genuine interest. Your example should be descriptive and directly relate to the position's description. Be sure to proofread. Do not start with hello my name is. Like I went over in the example prior, you can make your letter more interesting by starting with a quick teaser to something unique about you as an applicant or one of the experiences you're going to talk about. Don't just repeat your resume. This is an opportunity to explain how your experiences on your resume will help you do the job you're applying to. Don't indent your paragraphs or write more than one page. These are standard formatting practices for cover letter writing. Do not address your letter to whom it may concern. Instead, try and find someone specific to address your letter to. And if you can't find someone specific, start with Dear Hiring Manager or Dear Search Committee. Lastly, don't write general statements about how much you want to work for the organization or how great they are. These statements don't, don't sound genuine to the reader, and instead of talking about how great the organization is and how you'll benefit from working there, focus on what you're going to bring to the organization and how they will benefit from having you as an employee. After this webinar, you can continue developing your document by taking a look at our resume and cover letter guide. You will get an email after this webinar with a link to the guide, or you can pick up a copy in our office. You can also visit our website at career.uconn.edu to see even more resources to help you with your document, including Career On Demand. You can schedule an appointment for a resume or cover letter critique, and you can also meet with a career coach to discuss ways to find opportunities to gain experiences and build skills for your resume and cover letter. Thank you so much, and now we're going to move into our question and answer session. As a reminder, you can submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control. All right, so I'm going to give you all a few seconds to um, let any questions come in, and then I will start answering those. Okay. All right, I have a question about how long should my cover letter be? So your cover letter should be definitely less than one page. In the example we showed, the cover letter was um, four paragraphs with two body paragraphs. I have seen them go a little bit longer with three body paragraphs for five paragraphs total. As long as it's fitting on one page, I think that's fine.
All right, we have another question. Do I need to write a new cover letter for every job application? So you do, you, are, you should be tailoring your cover letter for every job application um, in terms of, especially when you mentioned the job title, the company, and those three skills and two experiences that you talk about in the cover letter, that may or may not be different from job to job that you apply for. Likely, if you're applying to a lot of positions where, whether that be jobs, internships, where the titles are very similar and the job responsibilities are similar and the company values are similar, you probably can um, keep a lot of those same skills or experiences in your cover letter and just make small tailoring changes with each cover letter. That said, if you're applying to a lot of positions that vary in, in title and in types of companies and what they're valuing and looking for, maybe you have one experience that's really relevant for one company and another experience that's um, more relevant, you're probably gonna be changing your cover letter a lot more for each application. Right, so I have another question. How do you avoid sounding redundant in your cover letter since they'll also have your resume? This is a great question. We get this question a lot. You, if you think about your resume, um, your resume is kind of like um, more of highlights or summaries. So you're gonna have your information about where you worked, what your job title was, and maybe a few bullet points about what you did there. Your cover letter is really your opportunity, opportunity to explain how that position that's on your resume specifically relates to the job you're applying for and how the skills you utilize at the position will specifically help you um, with the job. This is especially relevant if maybe the experiences on your resume are not um, quote unquote related or especially in like maybe task or responsibility to what you're applying for. So this is a great opportunity to explain how maybe that job you had as a cashier will relate to maybe that HR internship you're applying for. You can explain how the skills you use in that first experience are going to help you do the internship that you're applying for. So really it's, it's gonna be a lot deeper in your cover letter, the depth of your explanation. All right, so if there's no more questions, um, that will wrap up our question and answer session. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar, Cover Letters. I also wanna remind you that the store's internship and co-op fair is on Tuesday, February 4th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Again, that's on the store's campus in the Student Union Ballroom. Please check Handshake for more information to view attending employers and to register. And again, we're gonna include a link to all that information in the email uh, follow-up that you'll get after this webinar. Once you leave today's webinar, you will be directed to an evaluation for the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you could complete that and provide your feedback. You will also receive a follow-up email within 24 hours with a link to view a recording of today's webinar. Thank you so much for joining us today, and have a great rest of your day.